Hello and welcome to a new quick episode on my channel in the oil and gas series. This is Rod Rashwan and today's video goes by the title Double Jeopardy in Process Hazard Analysis. First of all, we want to learn what is a double jeopardy. Double jeopardy is a common process hazard analysis term. It is defined as the concurrent incidence of two independent initiating events or other revealed failures. Considering simultaneous failures is often characterized as double jeopardy and thereby disallowed. However, in a limited number of situations, it is valid and even necessary to analyze the possible occurrence of two or more concurrent failures. This definition is from the Center of Chemical Process Safety and first of all, we want to learn why it is omitted. The double jeopardy is omitted because first of all, trying to analyze all the permutations and combinations all is not a productive use of hazard time nor budget. So you have limited duration for the study and limited budget for the study. And you have to abide by those constraints. Second thing, that the concurrent instance of two revealed independent failures has a very low likelihood and can usually be neglected. But before you omit or neglect a concurrent instance, you have to pass through a critical checklist. Risks have several attributes. Here, we have to check three of those attributes before identifying these two events as double jeopardy and thus omitting them from further analysis. The first attribute is the connectivity check. You have to analyze whether they are truly independent failures or not. If they are not independent, they cannot be labeled as double jeopardy. The second test is the dormancy check, which is the time lag before detection and actually even before repair and restart to first failure. This is done to determine whether they are revealed failures or unrevealed failures or latent failures or dormant failures. So this is the second check. The third check is the joint exposure check to determine whether the severity of the joint event is much, much larger than the summation of the two events that it affects the final exposure. For example, each one of those events may be small, but together they are catastrophic. Then you cannot omit it as a double jeopardy. Let's try to apply this on a simple example. Let's consider an agitated atmospheric tank of polymer that's kept in molten state by using this steam coil. The polymer has a relatively low melting point, such as like 30 degrees Celsius, and the tank has also a nitrogen blanket for quality purposes. And we have two events that we want to evaluate. The first event is excess steam to the internal coil, resulting in the polymer being at hot enough temperature to pose a severe thermal burn hazard. The second event is the nitrogen supply regulator failing open, resulting in the tank being overpressurized. Let's first of all set the assessment basis. We will assume that the excessive steam has a frequency of 0.1 per year and 4 hours to detect, correct and restore. And for the nitrogen supply regulator fails open, it has a frequency of 0.02 per year and 8 hours to detect, correct and re-establish the steam flow. Now, let's imagine how these two events can occur concurrently. The first scenario is the temperature control system fails high first. Then, during the four hours time before the over temperature is detected and corrected, the purge nitrogen regulator fails open. In this scenario, the nitrogen supply regulator fails open the frequency we have stated before in the basis as 0.02 per year. But for the excess steam supply to the internal coil, to happen in the four hours, it has the frequency of 0.1 per year, but times four hours over the operating hours per year, which is in this example, 8,766 hours per year. And this equals to 5e minus 5. This 5 tend to the power of negative 5. We call this term as the unavailability. Okay, what is the, the frequency of this scenario? happening in this particular order equals to 0.02 per year times 5e negative 5 and this equals to 1e negative 6 per year but we have another scenario the other scenario is the burge nitrogen regulator fails open first then during the eight hours 
before the regulator failure is detected, corrected, the temperature control system fails high also. Okay, let's assess the frequency of this scenario. First of all, the excessive steam, it has 0.1 per year, as we stated in the basis of the assessment. Then for the nitrogen regulator fails open in the eight hours, it equals to 0.02 per year times eight hours over 8,766 hours per year. This equals to 2E minus 5. For this scenario to happen in this particular order, the frequency equals to 0.1 per year times 2E minus 5 equals 2E minus 6 per year. Okay, but we have two scenarios and one of them may happen. So what is the frequency that one of them may happen? Okay, this or this. The frequency of either both scenarios happen 1e to minus 6 per year plus 2e minus 6 per year equals to 3e minus 6 per year. As expected, this is a very low frequency of having the two failure events happen concurrently. This example illustrates why in general the concurrent incidence of two revealed failures has a very low likelihood and can usually be neglected when there are also scenarios involving revealed failures. But don't forget to apply the three critical checkpoints before considering this scenario as a double jeopardy. The first question is, are they truly independent? If one of them can cause the other, they are not independent and you cannot omit it as a double jeopardy. The second question is the duration of detection, correction and restart documented to be small or not? Because if the time is large, you cannot omit it as a double jeopardy. The third question is, is the joint exposure catastrophic or not? Because if it is catastrophic, you cannot exclude it as a double jeopardy. Okay, that's it for today. Hope to see you soon. Until we meet again, bye-bye.